Hey everybody, I'm really excited because I'm here with Debbie Kimball and she is way far away from me, but because of the internet and our Macs, here we are. Debbie, say hi to everybody. Hello everyone and this is a hello from Santiago, Chile. How about that? Now you don't sound like you're Chilean. No, I'm not Chilean. I, I, I actually, I'm British by birth, but I think we consider ourselves more than more Canadian. We came down here from Quebec. We're here for a couple of years with my husband's job. Well, it looks like while you've been down there and perhaps in Canada, you have been busy. Oh, it is just exquisite what we're looking at behind <laughs> you. Very much. It's fallen apart, actually, <laughs> the last few minutes. But um, yes, I've been quite busy here. And and uh, you were talking before about some of the palampours that you've seen. And I just realized that two of the pillows that I, I made for our sitting room here are very like the one you were showing me earlier. Which is well, the same sort of idea. Anyway, well, earlier, so we got to catch everybody up to speed. The truth of it is, okay. everybody, we've been trying to go PC to Mac, Mac to PC, and now our two Macs are in love and everything two is Macs working. Are working perfectly, yes. Well, well, let's go back to the beginning. You're in Chile and you have a brand new book out with CNT. Why don't you show everybody the cover? I do. This is my book, Beautiful Botanicals, which came out with CNT this month. It is absolutely exquisite, and um, your designs are, you've been inspired by rich history. Yes, I'm very inspired by the silks that, um, they were actually English silks in the 17th and 18th century, and more especially the chintz designs and silk designs that came from India to Europe in the 17th and 18th centuries. Well, I'm very in, inspired by them. In preparing for today's call, I'm like going, man, this work looks like something and then all of a sudden I'm going yay these Indian shawls that I own look at these yeah that's absolutely beautiful that's absolutely beautiful I, I just love the opulence and the sort of exuberance of the Indian textiles they're so over the top and I just love that I didn't like restraint well this particular thing I John like spent very over the a lot of money on it. Now get this one, Debbie. I got this in a thrift store for $30. That is so beautiful. Oh. That's so beautiful. I haven't done birds yet, but if I could, I would. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll get a copy for you, whatever. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now we know how you're inspired, and I love your work. And the fact of the matter is when I got these shawls, I was thinking, hmm, same sort of thing. But your applique, you approach it with kind of a free spirit. I do approach it with a free spirit. I think my needlework has improved because I've been sewing fanatically now doing this for five years. But I'm very self, I'm self-taught. I really am self-taught. I have very few rules and I do use, I use a very big seam allowance. I sew my bias on in a different way. And I think that most people that have learned with me are amazed how easy, how easy I make it. I really do think I make it easy. I'm not a perfectionist and, um, I must say I think my, my work has got better technically. But I think that you just have to sew the motifs on there, well, however it suits you best. You know? So you're a hand stitcher. I am a hand stitcher, and I found that because all of my motifs are quite stuffed with such a big seam allowance, I also am a hand quilter as well, and I echo quilt all my work very closely because it makes the designs pop out even more. Now, so Debbie, look yes. behind you, I see a red quilt. Would you mind holding that up? Ooh, I see a black one now that you're moved too. Oh, yeah, but, yes, I've got yes, I've got several. Yeah, this is this is a red one. I'm I'm in love with red, and I remember you once said that red is fun and neutral. The pattern for this is in the book. Now the black behind you. I'm not going to let you sit down that fast. Show us the black one. Isn't okay, that black? It's not a black. Do you mean this one? No. You might mean no, I think it might be my chair. Is it this one? No, right oh, behind your chair. What's that? Oh, that's blue, maybe, huh? Uh, this one is a lilac one. This is pure silk. This is completely silk. <gasps> and actually, it's a bit different for me because all of the flowers are botanically correct. <laughs> it's called Spring Revival. And so, and I was really, it was a lot of fun making this because by using all the dupiani, I could make it reflect and look quite 3D. The daffodils are quite three-dimensional. I have to tell you, I'm kind of drawn into silk, too, and Dupiani is what's catching my eye also. Do you only use Dupiani? Yeah. Well, actually, I use... 
any kind of silk. I use taffeta and dupioni, but I like dupioni because by using the grain and, and the reflection, you can really change the look of the flower according to where the light falls. I'm very excited by dupioni. So okay. what about quilting and chili? What's going on? Quilting in Chile is surprisingly big. There's a great shop in Santiago, which is run by a Chilean lady who used to live in California, and it does great business, which is wonderful. It sells all the notions, uh, quite a few fabrics, and it has workshops nearly every day. But the biggest thing which makes me laugh so much, because I've taught three workshops there, is they drink masses of wine the whole <laughs> time, throughout the workshop. And so you you have all these quilts and the applique and bottles of red wine and glasses with red wine sort of tea heated on, on styes. <laughs> but they're heavily into drinking while they quilt. Well, oh, that's so hilarious. I, I couldn't believe it. When I taught the workshop, I was saying, please stop giving me the wine. I'm not going to be able to teach. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you can be guaranteed they love you as a teacher, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so listen, do you travel around the world teaching or kind of what's your deal now? Well, the thing is, I still have quite a young son. I have four boys, and my youngest, Gus, is only 10. So, actually, I don't travel that much. But I am off to Cincinnati next week because I'm excited to say my quilt one best of show. Yay. And so, I'm, yeah, which is wonderful. So, I'm up to Cincinnati, which is really exciting. So, if anyone sees this, it's there. Come and say hello to me. Oh, and also, in the June issue of The Quilt Life, we're featuring your pillows. Do you have one back there? That yes, I do. Here's one. This is the one that's going to be featured. Uh, that's that way around because there's a pomegranate in it. Oh, yeah. Well, it can go anywhere, actually. That's I, right. <laughs> Just hold it still for one second. There we go. Woo, okay. kind of vertigo. And so that's yeah. going to be, that's going to press within days, too. So that's very exciting that's, stuff. That's fantastic. Thank hey, you. So, Debbie, what's the name of your website in case people want to? You know. um, my website is DeborahCampbell.com, and that's Deborah with an H and Campbell with a K, K-E-M-B-A-L-L. -L. Well, this has been delightful, and it has been technologically challenging for two <laughs> women. <laughs> and everybody, if it's a little herky-jerky, I don't even care because I think you're just absolutely delightful. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Fun. We're quilters, not, not IT <laughs> Hey, thank you so much, and just keep up your beautiful work. It is just so inspiring. Oh, well, everybody, thanks so much for joining us today, and um, I can't wait to get my hands on her book, as I know you too.